still working, gradually doing the decals. I can tell this is gonna turn into, do it anytime there's a little bit of time to work on it. Putting him on, season, on uh, Jesus' bike a little bit at a time. So we're uh, morning of Friday, April 25th. That's so hard for me to remember that stuff. Oh, dates don't matter down here Dates now. don't matter, but this is a second day riding. We're departing Catavina. It's 9.09 in the morning. Not getting that early a start, but it's all good. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll make it as far as uh, Mulahe, maybe Loreto today. Loreto is like 408 miles from here. Mulahe is like 320 or something like that. Awesome. Thanks, Robot. Thanks for checking in. What's Eric have to stay here? Uh, this place is beautiful. I've just been uh, exhausted here. Uh, you know, we just finally were getting some decent nights of sleep and stuff, but the bikes have been running good. We There was one wash that was out here, uh, you know, on a road. Uh, so. Luckily, we didn't have to go through too much mud and stuff, you know. Uh, but otherwise, the bikes are running really good. Uh -huh. And the best company and having everybody here and stuff, so. You slept good? You yeah. found a little gatos? Uh, I had a little, little friend, a little cat that followed around here in the place here. Gave him some pretzels and stuff. Yeah, it's just a very friendly little cat. So, yeah. And it's really, it's a, it, this is a beautiful place here. And it, you know, like I said, everybody is. Uh, the Spirits bikes are running good. Looking good. They're all good boys. They're all good. <laughs> <laughs> good. You get a picture of all the cactuses yeah. and stuff right What's here? your plan, Ted? What's my plan? For today. I'm going back to Ensenada because I have a party to attend tomorrow. Otherwise, I would be going with you. Yes, the next night. are lots of fun to ride with and uh, socially, great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for having me along. Thank you for coming with us. It was great. Thank you. Okay. See you the next time. We're gonna miss you. To, we're gonna miss you tonight. Okay. So check this guy out. This is Eric Dutra, the one and only. He's adjusting the things that we've come to call the Dutras. This is where he wears the old man sweatpants over the omnipresent cargo shorts. It's the best way to stay warm and be cool at the same time. Doing a little roundup, getting ready to pull out of the hotel in Catalina with Jesus rolling by, getting the troops ready. Christina, uh, passing this truck right through this little washout, just right outside the hotel. Um, just like the washout going in, not as bad, no dirt across it. All right, cool footage. Uh, leaving Catalina, still beautiful landscape, rocks and cactus. This robot's got the helmet cam on backwards, and you can see he's kind of zooming past everybody. Karen, always in the back. Jesus, Christina. Nice footage when it comes from the back, that's for sure. This is just outside Catavina, maybe 10 kilometers or so outside of Catavina. All right, I pulled over, got ahead of everybody, kind of just captured everybody in this corner here. You can see it's kind of windy, which is kind of wiggling around. We are standing in the middle of the Trans Peninsular oh, okay, okay. Highway, 70 miles or so from Catavina. Stopping and getting gas, but look at this amazing scenery. Mountains as far as you can see, visibility is unreal. It's like we're on our own little private road. Eric Dutra just got stung by a bee. He's getting a little topical cream. We busted out the first hit kit. Let's check in on him. Yeah, speaking of bees, robots gassing uh, some bikes bees, up. Uh, love the the yellow of these bikes. Speaking and of bees, all there's bees kind of all over in here. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. There's. Pzzz. Yeah, I've already had a couple already on them. Yeah, I got it got me good here. It just creeped under my singer right by the eye. And uh, Stina had to take it out. <laughs> so I have a little bit of drill here. Yeah. yeah. What did we bring in the first aid kit, Karen? We have everything you could possibly, well, not everything. Adhesive bandages, moleskin if you get a blister, space blanket, matches, uh, let's see, sterile gauze, allergy pills, neosporin, aspirin, <laughs> uh, gloves, sterile pads, Swiss Army knife, bandage. Heck yeah. Did you take a bandage drill too? I'm going to take one here, yeah. It might be good for morality. Good job. Karen is the medic for the trip, so she's done an excellent Beautiful. job in packing and taking care of Dutra's cute little piece thing. Look, I'm a bit. I haven't got one in years. 20 below <laughs> zero right now. We're freezing. 
Oh man, we gotta stay warm tonight. So we're practicing uh, lighting little roadside fires. You just gotta do what you gotta do. Oop, watch out, that's a little gassy there. <laughs> yeah! <Woo. laughs> this is for you, Keith Royer. Mexican style! <laughs> So this is the open road, post the roadside pit stop. This is Dutra passing a truck while heavily medicated on Benadryl. That's something for a man that is self-proclaimed, never ever takes pills. He was fighting it a little bit in the afternoon after taking that Benadryl, slapping himself in the face, singing to himself, doing anything he can. But you can't tell from his riding right now. But he's passing the second truck there it's got everything you possibly need to build a house i remember that distinctly concrete metal everything except the concrete blocks hola todo bien hasta aquí estamos en guerrero negro vamos a iniciar nuestra marcha nuevamente hasta santa rosalía gracias This is the awesome palm tree line route into the centro of San Ignacio, so kind of the historic downtown area. It's just a very special, magical ride. And here we are actually just making the final turn right into the uh, downtown area where on our right hand side here, there's going to be one of the original missions built by the same missionaries that uh, built the missions throughout the state of California. They started in Baja and worked their way north. All right, coming in right up on the left. You see that burning car, four cars burned out. If you notice, there's a fire extinguisher that somebody used to attempt to put it out. And then you got a cemetery on the right. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, this is our, uh, the first kind of set of windy roads on your way into uh, Santa Rosalio. Probably, I, I would say about an hour or two hours before Santa Rosalio. Uh, just pretty spectac spectacular riding, nice windy roads, just kind of dropping into a valley. The to topography really changes because we've just gone through a good 100 kilometer stretch of stuff from Rio Negro where it's just straight through the flats of the desert. And this is kind of dropping down. I think we're getting close to actually seeing the Sea of Cortez for the first time, right? Uh, not quite. It's actually the same footage as the... Uh, Christina's uh, action cam that's on the fender. It's just a uh, different perspective from the helmet. So Scott's helmet, right? Yep. This is definitely a super duper fun stretch of riding. At this point, it's kind of later in the afternoon. Everybody's in a good riding groove. It's a nice break with the twisties coming out of the flats of the desert. Pretty serendipitous riding right here. All right, this is the road leading to um, the Santa sea. Rosalia yep. and the Sea of Cortez. I see the, uh, the deep blue of the sea on the horizon to the right there. 
keep in mind we've done at that point about 200 kilometers between seeing bodies of water between Guerrero Negro and the Sea of Cortez for the very first time. And this is that pretty fierce drop down into Santa Rosalia. There's a sign that basically says you're entering into hell. Literally, the sign in Spanish says that. The drop, the first drop is so severe, it feels like you're driving off the side of the world. Again, typical, typical Mexico fashion. Notice there's no guardrails for the most part to counter the beautiful scenery that you see on the other side of those steep, deep drop-offs. I think this is where Robot actually started uh, passing some folks. You can kind of see him with the white helmet on the yellow bike, kind of knifing through and actually passing some people, kind of collecting some good footage. That's what separates the men from the boys. <laughs> Downhill speed, the car went through the curves. That was for darn sure. I remember being pretty freaked out, white knuckled, the first time we went down that thing on the Gotham trip two years ago. I was on my old bike, my Rally 200 going down this. Robot took off like a bat out hell, we never saw him. Christina was in tears. She was pulling into Santa Rosalia, down in the flats, the San Cortez on the left. On the right side on the outskirts of town, just kind of a landfill. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. This is entering Santa Rosalia proper. On the right-hand side here, there's a defunct in the remains of what was found here. Some, some things that have a copper mine. Santa Rosalia copper was like an old copper mine uh, that was closed for a long time. It's actually reopened in the last like six, seven years. That's what's kind of cool about Santa, Ro Santa Rosalia now. With the reopening of the copper mine, it's kind of a lie. We're pulling in here on Friday afternoon around 5.30 or 6. And there's just a lot of people out and about. It was kind of payday. The lines of the banks were packed. Everybody was, seemed to be in good spirits and there was plenty of stuff to look at. So we're still in Santa Rosalia, sipping down the Micheladas. This is an old, like, uh, ironclad or metal church that was Fenocista. built by the same guy that uh, des designed and built the uh, Eiffel Tower. So it's Friday evening, Friday afternoon, big kitchenera going on. This whole town is just kind of alive with a lot of energy and everything like that. Went to the old bakery, had some phenomenal tacos. Very cool. And next we're going to go up top of this hill here, and there's an old uh, two-story wooden building, which you don't see very often in Mexico, i.e. the wooden buildings. But uh, it's like the old original like telephone like dispatch center, like the first telephone system in all of Latin America. So we're just going to do a quick little drive-by and then head on to Mula Head. Signing out Friday afternoon from Santa Rosalita. So we pulled away from the church and head up this hill. On the left, you'll see there's this old all wooden museum that was once the first transcontinental phone system in all of Latin America, the very first one in fact. In general, the construction up on this hill is awesome. Lots of wood construction that was brought over and imported by the old mining company from France. Got some James Brown right here. Gotta kiss myself. Kiss it, kiss it. What is up, everybody? Friday night in sleepy little Mulahe. Uh, we reached our goal, did about 320 miles a day or something like that. Thanks to the Lonely Planet book, they recommended this place where we're at. And right now, it's called Hotel Las Casitas. The owner, named Javier, has a restaurant and bar and hotel. This is kind of the hotel room. I think he said there's a total of like 10 rooms or something like that. But look at this awesome little like outdoor courtyard. The men are in this room here that Scott just came out of. Robots editing video. Neutra is break dancing. The, some Portuguese TV station he picked up. Get him in there. What time is it in Portugal, Dutra? Uh, let's see, what time is it here? What is it, like 11 here? Yeah, 11. 11, uh, okay, and this time here is, well, I'm saying it's 6 and 10. Uh, 10, so it's 6 in the morning. Of course, we're having so some... got another hour and a half, two hours in the car. Just had an awesome dinner at the restaurant up front. Of course, we're having some Pacificos. Wi-Fi is pretty good at this place. Let's walk up front. Let's check out the restaurant. Let's sneak in the restaurant. 
Karen, Christine, and I are in that room there. Got some of the travel docs and stuff all sorted. The group fun's doing good, but this place is awesome. Very, very awesome. Okay, Javier, you can tell he takes great pride in the place. The visit he's built the way he owns it. Fountain floor. We got a little spot for live music and entertainment. Super cool lighting. Very cozy, very intimate. Uh, we have like uh, the steak a la cheddar, like the flank steak. Kind of traditional fare to a certain degree. But it's cool if they actually cook it right outside here on this grill. Outside in the restaurant. And it's kind of everything you could expect or wish for in a small little Mexican Puebla village. There's Angel, who is our server tonight. So we're doing a little video. Gracias por todo. Buenas noches. Nos vemos mañana. Gracias por la comida. La hospitalidad. So then I'm going to look inside real quick too. Do so a quick little walk through. Just awesome, dude. How cozy this is. It's on Instagram. Cool bar. Look at the wine. Got the wine. And oh, you got to check this out. <laughs> right there. The cerveza is bien frias. This is a cool thing about Mexico right here. No matter where you go, even in like the smallest town where there's like one market, there may not be electricity, but there'll always be your fridge with ice cold beer, and they've always back it up with the digital rating, because that's what matters. But that's it, so this is uh, end of riding night two, signing out from Mulahe. Uh, another 300 miles or so tomorrow to La Paz. Uh, our good friends, uh, Jaime Maggie and their two sons that Best, best of customers and friends of the shop that moved their family to La Paz are going to be meeting up with us somewhere in the middle of the route. Um, so it'll be cool to rendezvous with them and then we're staying at their house and outside in their palapa once we get to La Paz tomorrow. So we'll see you in the morning.